Uh, Sadhguru, we should also look at some hard facts within our country. There are about three and a half lakhs of crimes committed against women every year. And of course, more than half of them are domestic violences in certain families where women are respected very well, as you said. You know, the boys are taught to treat them with respect from the very childhood. But then despite all that, there are these huge crimes committed and most of them go unreported. So the reported crimes are about three and a half lakhs, unreported, God knows how many. And from Isha Foundation, you've been doing some wonderful, uh, wonderful work, working on the inner engineering of cells. Have you ever done anything to work with the criminals like these or work with the seriously challenged people to change their uh, system somehow and overall in general make the society more sensitive towards women and treating them with respect? Is Isha doing anything on that? We have had uh, over two decades of activity in the prisons in Tamil Nadu and some prisons in United States. This is called as the inner freedom for the imprisoned. This has worked miracles within the prison, but that won't make a big so impact on the society. It is for those people who are trapped in the prison. But before labeling people as criminals and rapists and this and that, we must understand this. I want you to look at this sensitively. See, whether it's, a ma it's, whether it's a male or a female, at a certain stage in their life, there is a certain hormonal influence and there are certain things happening. Knowing this or whichever way, in the past we arranged it like this, by the time fifteen, sixteen a girl starts getting married or at least starts telling her, this is your man, this is what is going to happen to you, the boy starts looking at it from sixteen and eighteen, nineteen, twenty, he gets married. Today, because of our educational systems and our… the world structure itself is like that, girls are on an average in India getting married at twenty-one, twenty-two, boys are getting married at twenty-six, twenty-seven, many of them are crossing thirty before they get married. Leave the educated and well-to-do, they may find some solutions for themselves. But the larger population, there's a huge migration happening from the village to the city. If this young boy who is a little yellow, you know, he knows a bit of… Uh, he knows how to connect two wires, means he's an electrician, he comes to the city. And he knows little carpentry, he comes to the city. A seventeen, eighteen-year-old boy comes to the city, which is a strange world, a brutal world. Don't think it's not brutal for a man. It's very brutal out there. When he comes from the village to the city, he's battered, he's thrashed, he's misused, everything happens to him also. Now, if he was in the village, his mother, his mousy, his somebody was constantly telling him, hey, you must marry this girl, you must marry that girl. I'm telling you, just the thought settles many things that tomorrow or day after or next year or next year I'm going to get married. He just lands in the city, he has nobody that he can call his own. He gangs up with three, four boys and they have their own wild things going on. And of course, everybody has these stupid cell phones. Uh, they're smartphones, okay, I'm calling <laughs> Now they're watching all kinds of pornographic stuff on this and he has no hope whether he will ever meet a woman in his life. I want you to understand this. And there are millions of them in every city. You have not trained them to be sages, all right? They're just regular boys and as under drop of alcohol, the guy goes wild and he will do wild things. I am not trying to condone their activity. But I'm saying as a society, should we not debate? What should we do with this? It's a human problem, all right? We want to act like it doesn't exist. Well, it'll hit you in the face again and again. We want to act like human sexuality does not exist. Well, it's splashing in your face. When it splashes in your face, it's ugly. But is it not time? We must at least debate what are we going to do with it? If you want to handle this, they were getting married at fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, it was very easily settled. Now they're getting married at thirty maybe and this guy has no hope who's come from village to city. How do you handle this? What is the way out of this? Should we not debate? I'm not saying you must do this or that. I'm saying is it not time we give it some thought out of our humanity? Those of us who are all the best arrangements in our lives are different. These people who just to earn a living, they come from a… maybe poor, 
but comfortable atmosphere of the village to the harsh atmosphere of the city without any family support or anything, how do you handle these guys? You want to put them in concentration camps or do you want to provide them some kind of life? This is something you have to decide, isn't it? At least we must be willing to debate. Every time a terrible rape happens, we all scream and then we settle down after three days and go about our business. No, it's time to address it. How are we going to handle the hormonal tendencies of both male and female in this country? Because they're not getting married before eighteen, it's a crime. <laughs> it's not just that they're not getting married, it is a crime to get married. If it is a crime, what is the solution? So that people can conduct their lives in a more sane manner, isn't it? It, it is something we must address. True, more than the reactive measures that the governments usually take up once the crime is committed, the proactive measures to somehow cut this down and work with the society is what uh, we should largely be looking at. I totally agree with that. And I truly appreciate the work of Isha Foundation where you have taken up rural rejuvenation, which kind of cuts down the migration into cities and makes uh, more happy living for the people in the uh, you know, rural segments. These are wonderful initiatives. This is a but simple, simple thing, let me tell you. You must do this in Telangana because it's in your hands. I'm telling you, in every village, at least reasonable, let's say five, ten thousand uh, population village, you must build multiplexes, cinema multiplexes with maybe just eighty, hundred seats per theatre. Just for this, a whole lot of people are coming to city, just know this. If you build a multiplex in the village and five just released movies are going on, believe me, they will stay right there, many of them. Very true, we, have, we are already doing that, sir. In all the block headquarters in the uh, bus, bus stands, we are already building multiplexes. This may look frivolous, but I'm telling no, you this not. is important. It is a serious <laughs> uh, issue and there, there needs to be some social life existing there as well. So that is why the government has taken up this stand and we are doing that currently. Sports complex, multiplex. Yes.